Well, it's finally happened. You've moved out. You're on your own. Congratulations. But everyone still needs a little help sometimes. Mom, have you seen my wallet? It's in your back pocket. No, I checked there. Your other back pocket, dear. Ah. Thanks, Mom. Introducing the Mom Personal Assistant, the only smart speaker device with all the wisdom, caring, and sage advice of a mother. Mom, please call Brad. Honey, I'm just not sure he's right for you. Just call him. Okay, calling Ryan. No, Mom, I said call Brad. Trust me. The Mom PA always has your best interests in mind. Wish me luck, Mom. Big interview today. Did you eat breakfast? Uh... Is that what you're wearing? Wait, what? <laughs> Did you even shower? She's there to provide a helping hand whenever you need it. Mom, set a timer for 40 minutes. Mom? The mom personal assistant won't function until you say the magic word. Oh, right. Mom, please set a timer for 40 minutes. Sure thing, hon, but it's only 30 minutes for that dish. The mom PA is always correct and basically knows everything. Mom, what setting should I use for this laundry? Mom, do you think I should color my hair? Hey, mom, can you please order mac and cheese? You still have two boxes. What? No, we're out. Did you look? Yeah, I just looked. It's gone. Do you want me to look? Uh, no, no, it's okay. I'll go look again. Try looking with your eyes this time. Based on God's perfect design, the mom personal assistant is thoughtful, kind, encouraging, and supportive. You are beautiful. It's okay. You're gonna get through this. I am so proud of you. You can change the world. But right now, hon, you really need to change your socks because they smell like a dumpster. Ugh, mom. The mom personal assistant. Always helpful, always reliable, and always there for you. Good morning, Causeway. Welcome to church and welcome all the friends of Causeway visiting us today. And uh, it's just so great to have you with us. And a big shout out to the mums. Happy Mother's Day. Um, I, I unfortunately no longer have my mum with me, but every Mother's Day I just reflect on the precious lady that I had for a mum. And like many of you, you won't have your mums, but today if you do, you can be, treat them very, very special. We, it's a lovely, lovely verse in, in Proverbs 31, and I'm going to read it from the Message Bible. Just the last two verses, 30 and 31, it says, Charm can be misleading, and beauty is vain, and so quickly fades. But the virtuous woman lives in the wonder, awe, and the fear of the Lord. She will be praised throughout eternity. I love that part. So go ahead and give her credit that is due, for she has become a radiant woman, and all her loving works of righteousness deserve to be admired at the gateway of every city. I think at the gateway of every home, at the gateway of every community. So just welcome to church today. In a moment, we're going to worship. And I was asked, why, why do you do the songs at church, Colin? And I said, well, the simple answer is we're created to worship. And if we don't worship God, then we worship something else. So I want, even if you're visiting with us today, I want to invite you to join in with us to worship because I can guarantee you something. There's a presence and a joy in the worship of God. So welcome to church. Be blessed.
kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw it to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for our sake you die
so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God Welcome to Causeway. Happy Mother's Day to all you mums out there. I really hope someone's made you a cup of tea or coffee this morning or maybe some breakfast but mostly I just hope that you'll be loved on in a special way today. I love that we set aside a day just to honour our mums and those special women who make such a big difference in our lives. If you think it's just a commercial gimmick I want to give you a slightly different perspective. Today's a day that you can honour your mum. So go and give her a hug right now or pick up the phone and call her and tell her how much you love her and appreciate her. My mum isn't with us anymore and I miss her greatly. But on Mother's Day, I like to remember her and I'm just so thankful for the awesome mum and nana that she was and how blessed I was to have her as my mum. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a real privilege to be talking with you today. And um, a couple of weeks ago, we began a series called Who is Jesus? And so far we've talked about how Jesus is our best friend and how he's our teacher. And today we're going to look at an attribute of Jesus that I think is very, very relevant for right now. We're going through an event that none of us expected to happen. A global pandemic that's basically shut the world down. We've had four weeks of complete lockdown at level four, two weeks at level three, and we're all hoping for an announcement tomorrow that we're moving to level two, which will allow a whole lot more businesses to reopen. Lives have been put on hold, people have had to reassess finances, business owners are having to make choices and decisions they'd rather not be making. And for many of you, this is a time of great uncertainty and fear, both about the virus and about what the future holds financially and socially. More than ever, people are looking for something solid to hold on to, something that they know that they can trust and depend on. And today, I want to share with you something that I believe is exactly that. It's what I hold on to and what I depend upon. The one thing in my life that I know I can trust, no matter what happens. The Bible verse for this series that we've been using is from a letter that Paul wrote to a church in Corinth in ancient Greece. And this is what it says in 1 Corinthians 2 verses 1 to 2. You'll remember friends that when I first came to you to let you in on God's master stroke, I didn't try to impress you with polished speeches and the latest philosophy. I deliberately kept it plain and simple. First, Jesus and who he is. And second, Jesus and what he did. We're trying to keep it simple as we take a look at what the Bible says about who Jesus is. A lot of people have really distorted views of God, their ideas and their perceptions especially of Jesus and what he looked like and what he was all about are very different from what the Bible says. Many traditions and paintings and movies have shown him in a light that's not biblical. 
You see, how we see God, how we view him, is really, really important. Well-known pastor and author A.W. Tozer wrote, What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. So we're trying to set the record straight. We want to help you discover who Jesus really is. He wants to be our friend. He wants to be our teacher. And today we're going to learn that Jesus is our shepherd. I think this might have been Jesus' favorite description of himself. It was a particularly good analogy in Jesus' day because everyone knew the role of a shepherd. It was a huge part of their culture. And shepherds in those days spent most of their life with their sheep. They slept with them at night to protect them. They moved them to fresh pastures to feed during the day. They constantly watched over them. This is what Jesus said in John 10 verses 10 and 11. The thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. That's the devil. The only thing he does is steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. Yep, Jesus is calling us his sheep and he is our shepherd. Psalm 100 verse 3 says, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. That's what the Bible says. One of the most beautiful descriptions of Jesus as a shepherd is Psalm 23. Many of you will recognize this. It's a very well known psalm. This is what it says. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So beautiful. I love the Passion Bible translation of this. It starts off in verse 1. The Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. It's translated like that because the Hebrew word used here for shepherd is also the Hebrew word for best friend, which we talked about three weeks ago. Jesus is our best friend. It's interesting also that it says, my shepherd. He's not just the shepherd or someone else's. He's my shepherd, my friend. I really, really hope that you know him that intimately and have a deep relationship with the one who longs to care for you and love you. If Jesus is our shepherd, what does that mean for us? We're going to look at what this psalm tells us about Jesus, our shepherd. Firstly, the shepherd provides. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That literally means I will lack nothing. He'll make sure I'm cared for. In Jesus' day, the shepherd provided everything his sheep needed. Food, water, shelter. And those sheep quickly learned to stay with their shepherd. They trusted him to provide for them. The attribute of the shepherd is an important one for some of you to hear about today. These are unusual times. There's lots of uncertainty, lots of fear, so much unknown, and some of you are facing big challenges with your job, your business, your finances. It can be really hard, especially when you're worrying about money. I want to encourage you today, because I've followed Jesus for a very, very long time, and everyone who has followed him will say the same as I do. I can tell you today, he's a faithful God. He has never, ever let me down. Ask anyone who's loved him, they'll say the same thing. I've had times of difficulty, but God has always been faithful to me. I want you to know the relationship and the security that comes from knowing he's taking care of you. In every situation, good or bad, because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's a little bit like parenting. We've got two kids, a son and a daughter. And when they were little, they never worried about whether or not we were going to feed them or clothe them. If they needed something, we'd provide it for them. That did change a little bit as they got older. What they thought they needed differed from what we thought. But the thing is, 
Our kids knew that they didn't have to worry. They knew we would provide what they needed. They were able to rest in the relationship that their mum and dad were their providers. And as long as they stayed in that relationship, there was probably nothing we wouldn't do for them. God is offering us the same sort of relationship. He wants to provide for us. The problem is we get all self-sufficient and get out from under the care of our shepherd. And we want to take care of ourselves. But Jesus wants to take care of you and provide for you. In Philippians 4 verse 19 it says, And the same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. This is just amazing news. This first attribute of the shepherd is that he wants to supply all your needs to be your provider. So how do we get under that care and that provision? Well, our kids stayed under our provision and care as long as the relationship stayed pure and right. If they'd decided to get out there on their own and go their own way, they would have found out really early what the real world was like. In the same way, if we choose to come under the care of our shepherd and honour him, he will provide what we need. The second thing the shepherd does is the shepherd restores. When we go through difficult times, it sucks something out of us. Colin and I lost both our dads within 12 months, and then not many years later we lost both our mums just 16 months apart. And I don't think we realised it at the time, but that really took a lot out of us. We all have seasons when we need to be restored. Psalm 23 says the shepherd makes me to lie down. Why does it say makes me? Because we won't do it for ourselves. He has to make us lie down, make us rest. We don't want to do it because we're so busy doing life, so independent, so wanting to have it all together, that we don't allow him to restore us or to know the peace that Jesus brings. In John 14, 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I don't give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Jesus wants us to know that peace that only he can bring. It goes on to say in Psalm 23, He wants to make us lie down in green pastures. This was the place where the shepherd would lead his sheep to feed. A safe place that met their needs. What's that place for us? I believe it's the Word of God, the Bible. The Bible's been my lifesaver. It brings comfort like nothing else. I love reading the Bible every day. I love, love, love the Bible. But when times are hard, I really love it because it brings comfort and strength to me like nothing else. It feeds your soul just like the sweet green pastures fed the sheep. You need to get into it, because there's comfort there. I want to ask you a question. When was the last time you just sat on the hillside and fed yourself? Not just a five minute little devotional at the start of the day while you're drinking your coffee before you rush off to work, but I'm talking about just taking time to sit and feed on the comfort of God's word, because we all need to do this. He leads me to green pastures. And then it goes on to say, He leads me beside the still waters. What are the still waters? I think that's worship. When my mum died, it was very sudden. She was in hospital awaiting heart surgery and then something went wrong and we got the call to say that they didn't think that she was going to survive the night. By the time we got to the hospital, she had actually already gone to be with Jesus. So it was a big shock. And um, we spent time there as a family and I kind of held it together mostly until we got in the car to come home and then I didn't hold it together. But what I did do was I put on some worship music in the car. I turned it up loud and I soaked in the presence of God through that worship and within minutes I was in his presence and my world that had been turned upside down had a peace and a calm that was only there because God's presence was there. Today, in the midst of so much fear and so much uncertainty and so much unknown, so much noise about COVID-19 and levels and lockdowns and viruses, 
Some of you need to turn the TV off, okay? Listen to me. Turn the TV off. Turn the, turn the news down. Get off Facebook. Don't spend so much time on your computer. Instead, turn on the worship music and let the still waters of God restore your soul. This has been a really challenging weeks, few weeks for many of you. And some of you need a restoration that only the shepherd can provide, that you can only find in God. Get on your own. Spend time reading God's word, listening to worship, and get restored. Try reading the Psalms. I love the Psalms. I'll tell you what, the Psalms cover every emotion you will ever feel. The shepherd wants to restore you. The third thing the shepherd wants to do is he wants to lead you. If you've wondered whether this actually happens, a few years back Colin and I had the privilege to be in Israel and we were driving in our rental car um, near Bethlehem and looking out over the fields and the hills off to the side of the road and all of a sudden we saw a man appear over the top of the hill and sure enough he was a shepherd and all the sheep were walking along behind following him. This psalm tells us that the shepherd leads me in paths of righteousness. In other words, he leads me in right paths. As you live life, there are lots of different paths you can take. Some paths aren't the right ones, and if you take them, you're going to find yourself in trouble. But there are some paths that are the right ones, paths that if you took them, have God's name on them and bring fulfillment and make your world make sense. People often ask me, how do you find that path? How do you know God's will for your life? Well, Jesus said in John 10 verses 3 to 5, the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. See, they recognize him. Jesus continued, but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they don't recognize a stranger's voice. How do you recognize God's voice? You know what it sounds like. It's like when a friend calls. They don't have to say who it is. You recognize their voice because you talk often and you spend time together. That's the kind of relationship Jesus wants with us, where you're so close to him and know him so well that you recognize his voice easily. When someone says, I don't know what God's saying, well, I have to ask, have you spent enough time with him? Enough time that you start to easily recognize his voice. Enough time with him where he has this distinct voice that you know and understand. That's why daily communication with the Lord is so important. Time reading the Bible every day, spending time quietly letting him speak to you. For too many people, your only communication with God is once a week or in an emergency. You need to have daily communication to get close to him, to learn to recognize his voice and let him lead you. The fourth thing the psalm tells us that the shepherd does is he supports us. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Going through losing someone close to you is really tough, whether it's suddenly or after an illness. My mum wasn't afraid of dying. In fact, she took every opportunity she could to tell others that her God was real and that he was faithful and had never left her. She had no fear of death. Instead, she had an amazing peace. We all need to know that kind of peace. We all need to know that God is there for us. There's nothing better than knowing that someone's got your back when you're going through a tough time. Through that time when my mum died, Colin had my back. He would say to me, I'm here, if there's anything you need, I've got you. But I also knew that Jesus was with me and he got me through that time. I want to tell you today that no matter what you're going through, Jesus is there with you. When you're at the graveside, he's there. When the future's uncertain, when you can't see a way forward with your business, when you're not sure how you're going to pay that bill, those times when life seems all too much, when you're crying in your bed, he's there. Paul, who we mentioned earlier, went through a tough time, and this is what he wrote in the Bible in 2 Timothy. 
4 verses 16 and 17. He said, no one came to my support. Everyone deserted me. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength. When it seems like everybody else has deserted you, Jesus wants to be your shepherd, your support. He's there for you. The shepherd protects. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. There's a sad misconception about God that he's sitting up in heaven with this rod in his hand waiting to whop you over the head the minute you do something wrong. I want to put this right today. That rod that the shepherd holds, it wasn't used on the sheep. It was used on whatever tried to harm the sheep. The shepherd's role was to protect his sheep because there were wolves and the sheep were lunch. The wolf wasn't afraid of the sheep, but he was afraid of the shepherd because the shepherd had the rod. The shepherd used the rod to deal to the wolf. The rod and staff comfort you because the shepherd's not hitting you, he's protecting you. In John 10 verse 11, Jesus said the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus is that good shepherd. He loves us, he's protecting us. The psalm goes on to say, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. What a strange phrase. It sounds like there's a war going on and, and the shepherd sets up a dinner table for you to sit and feast and relax while the battle's going on around you. You know, no matter what's going on around you, as COVID rages, as businesses close, as unemployment soars, he's saying, you can just chill out. I've got this. I'm taking care of this for you. God is fighting for you right now. Finally, the shepherd blesses. Some of you have been taught that God is mean, that he's not good, that he's after you, that he withholds things. God's not mean. He's not a withholder. He's a giver. The psalm says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. It literally means his goodness will chase you down. We sang a song just before this and it says, All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Your goodness is running after me. He's a good God who wants to bless you with so much. In Hebrews 13 verses 20 and 21 it says, Now may the God of peace who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. Not some things. He wants to give you everything good. At the start, I said what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Why? Because if you understand who he is and how he wants to relate to you, it's going to change your relationship with him. So what do we do with all this? What do you do with a God who wants to provide and restore and lead and protect and support and bless you? There's really only one response. Get to know him. Know the shepherd. Today is Mother's Day. I think the mother heart is pretty close to the father's heart. A mother heart wants to provide and restore and lead and protect and support and bless her children. When we have children, we don't keep them at arm's length at a distance from us. We embrace them, we love them, and in response, our children run to us. There's nothing more beautiful than seeing a little one respond to the voice of their mama and run into their arms. They know that's where they get fed and cared for and looked after and loved. They don't run like that to just anyone. They run to the voice, to the mama they know. That's exactly what our response to God needs to be. Jesus said in John 10 verse 14, I know my sheep and my sheep know me. That word know speaks of intimacy, a depth of relationship. Jesus is inviting you to get close and love him because he longs to be the shepherd of your soul. That's my relationship with Jesus and I want nothing more than for you to have a relationship with Jesus like that too. Some of you have that relationship, but maybe it needs to go just a little bit deeper. 
Maybe you need to let him lead you to those quiet waters, to that place of closeness on a more regular basis. Some of you, maybe you don't have that relationship at all today. And you know what? The only thing stopping you is your sin. But the really good news about that is that Jesus has already paid for that. When he died on the cross, he paid the price for you to be able to stand forgiven before God. It's called salvation. And you can receive that salvation today. What does that mean? Well, it's really summed up in one word. Surrender. All you need to do is surrender your heart to the shepherd, the God that loves you enough to die for you. If you'd like to do that today, I'd consider it a real honour to lead you in a prayer that you could pray. Why don't you pray with me right now? Jesus, I need you. I want you in my life. I'm so sorry for living my life without you. I believe you are the true and living God. I believe you are the Son of God that you died on the cross to save me from my sins and that you rose again. And today, I hand over the controls of my life and make you Lord of my life. If you prayed that prayer with us today, or if you have any questions or want to know more, we'd love to hear from you. Maybe give you a Bible, get a Bible to you somehow anyway, and some help to get help you get to know Jesus. You can email us. There's an email address going to come up on the screen in a few minutes. Or you can message us through social media. But please make contact with us. We'd love to hear from you and connect with you. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really hope that you mums have a blessed day. And we look forward to joining you again next week. God bless you.